we are. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. As you can see, we got the iconic Patronus Twin Towers right behind me. So today we're not gonna be going here. You've seen this plenty of times. You don't need to see it again. I wanna show you some of the more local side of Kale. Some of the things that you'd only see here typically if you lived here. So I actually did live here for 10 years growing up. I definitely can say that I have a bit of a local's perspective. However, I will be enlisting the help of a good friend of mine who is truly born and raised and still lives here to this day. And without further ado, let's see a side of Kuala Lumpur that you definitely don't see a whole lot of on the internet. And I look forward to showing you around my former hometown. All right, so here we are, Jalan Pataling, one of the most famous streets in all of Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. And I'm joined here by my boy. What's up, y'all? This is my boy, Lim Ji Ming, certified Malaysia expert. And today, what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> today, he's gonna be giving us a full-on guide around some of the best spots here in Kuala Lumpur that you ain't ever seen before. But you definitely have seen this one. Yeah, loads of tourists come here. Yeah, it's filled with a lot of foreigners. But there's also like a great deal of history around this area. If you looked around, the area that's like they're starting to develop and gentrify a little bit but it's also becoming like I still like that they're retaining a lot of like the colonial architecture uh, one thing I like is like the windows they open up they open up towards you shop um, house style the shop house style right sure, exactly sure. all the flat Classic. shop houses like the little archways and everything in between it's also becoming like a cultural capital in a lot of ways. Everyone knows the archway behind us, the grand entranceway into the market where you can get any kind of fake goods that you possibly want. <laughs> a lot of fake goods. For the best prices. You just gotta make sure to haggle a little yeah, bit, and yeah. once you do that, you're gonna be good to go. The, the goal is, okay, I think minimum half. Half. Yeah, oh, 100%. No. If, you're, if you're paying more than 50% <laughs> of the price, you're getting ripped <laughs> off. Ripped so off. definitely <laughs> don't pay more. Ripped. They charge you like 100 ringgit, boom, hit them with the yeah. 50. Does feel like my mom? What's your mom pay? 10% like that. So, like, that's the old people's skill. I don't got that. Yeah, no, no, we, so ain't, we ain't there yet. So, what you can see around us is the more peaceful side of Chinatown. A lot more local businesses, and also you'll have, uh, look at the aperture. and also you'll have a lot of like cool bars, cool restaurants yeah, that yeah, have been yeah, revamped yeah, quite yeah, considerably yeah, in the last few yeah. years. I like it. If you ever want to go in that town, yeah. have you ever been? Uh, it's yeah, developed yeah, yeah. so it's developed so much recently. Really? Uh, yeah, and it's because this has become like a lot like it, right? It takes some of the historical places but also had like a lot of the uh, a lot of these new trendy hip kind of places very hipster yeah. very like I'm gonna go wear a beanie my nicest outfit and go into it is how you drip in Malaysia uh, you just gotta rip the beanie and then you're set uh, you know I gotta wear my dickies uh, uh, wow, wow, dickies a perfect example of one of these restaurants that is a, a nice blend of old and new would be Dabao here right across the street. Dabao has some awesome, well, bao, bao buns, you know, you see them all on the west. As you can see up top, you have the more old school traditional sign with the Carlsberg, the beer ad, and then you got the more modern neon sign. Yeah. I think why it's called Dabao as well, it's just obviously because baos, but also because you know what Dabao is, right? Take like, yeah, takeaway, yeah, takeaway, yeah, takeaway means yeah. takeaway. Even go to a non-Chinese place, ah, uh, bang, boleh tapao yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'll yeah, learn you as say, well, you yeah. say Dabao and it means take away. It's Dabao. Oh, wow. Here's Piqua right now. This is not the original Piqua that got like um, the Bib Gourmand recently, but it's one of the offshoots, right? And this, this, I, what the Bib Gourmand is, is that the Michelin came here very recently. Too late in my opinion. They should come way earlier. Malaysia, food capital. Uh, and this place was recommended by uh, Michelin. Uh, I, I love the architecture here as well. It's also a good place where they mix the old and the new with each other. The Chinese signs, the wooden tables, everyone sitting on stools. And they do it. Honestly, what I kind of like, yeah, I'm not a coffee guy. Don't get me wrong, I don't like coffee very much at all. But honestly, we came here last time and we tried the clay pot coffee. Not bad. Pretty bossy. It has. You call it Chinese wok hay. I mean, that's usually for food, right? But so when you have a wok, they have like these jet flames that come out. If you're, if you're from a Chinese country, you understand what this means. And it gives it like the smoky flavor. And you can kind of taste that in the clay pot uh, coffee as well. It's kind of warm, like kind of this toasty, roasty flavors that you get from the clay pot. You know, I was never born and raised in Kuala Lumpur. I was born and raised slightly outside Kuala Lumpur. But it's a cultural center. It's, it, it's relatively new. It's a melting pot of people, especially in this general area. It's a humongous melting pot. Uh, there's a lot of Chinese Muslim places opening up. And you'll see these murals that we just showed you. And I don't think the murals 
we don't have this anymore, these kinds of murals. But I think the spirit is being lived on. Younger people, I think we were abandoning at one point that these places were not becoming as seen or looked upon anymore. But younger people are slowly reclaiming these spaces there. The first place we went to Lifeong, like a, a coffee shop, a hawker center. We would call it a coffee shop, right? My friends and I, we go after, after that, after playing sports. Drink te, lim te la, that means we'll, we'll drink some tea. Our uncles there will stay till the middle of the night, drink some beers themselves. I, I think in urban centers, people are losing connection with each other. And this place, so this is still a place where you can come connect. Mamaks and coffee shops. Everyone connects with, oh bro, you know this place ah? No, you know this place ah? That's why I really like. Every Malaysian feels that they know about food. I, I go to a party where I don't know any Malaysian person. I'll chat with that person. Hey bro, I recently went to this place ah, and ate the best chicken rice. Hey, no lah bro, the guy will say, no lah bro, no bro, you gotta try my chicken rice here. It's a competition slightly, but also it's all in good fun. Everyone will go searching for these places, right? My family and I will, will like, oh, Google new places. Oh, let's go here, let's go here, let's go here. We're all super critical of our local joints everywhere you go to. Whether we try one place or another place, so most people live to eat here. We really don't take anything. And it's not about the ambiance anymore. It's not about how comfortable it is or whatever. But good food, you cannot, 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 cannot replace it. Cannot. You get, if you get good food, it's a blessing. And that, that's how we treat it, right? Oh my God, this is so good. We have to come here again, you know? We, we, we constantly think that and it, it all comes down to the bottom line about food. And I don't feel like it's that in, especially Western nations maybe. Everyone cares about the ambiance? Not here, not here. Bro, you can literally hear the vents right there. Yeah, that's, that's a generator. I know, and that's literally how you get down to Pasamala. It's a freaking portable generator. Yeah, I can smell the smoke uh, in the air. It's really good. So, it. how long is the whole thing in total? I think it's like 2.3 kilometers. 2.3 kilometers yeah, yeah, of night yeah. market. Hey, and last time I we went to Pasamala, we saw like some weird awful. Awful? Awful. Awful, what's awful? I like 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 spare parts on, a, on oh, an animal, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And I want you to try some century egg if we can find any. Oh my. 2.3 kilometers long. We're gonna see loads of shit. A bunch more fake shit, but for a better price probably. No. This is gonna be a good time. I've yeah. never been out here. I honestly still don't know where the fuck we are. We, when we were driving, we did not see anything for a little while. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to bringing you guys along with us. And uh, let's just get right into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's fucking go. <laughs> So here we are, behind us you can see, that's the Pasar Malam, yeah. the world's longest Pasar yeah, Malam. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I just want to give one tip, Yeah. because I'm going to do this, I'm going to go like wide-eyed for the first things I see as soon as we walk in. When you're in Malaysia, this is how you park the whip, just in the middle of the street. So before we hit up the world's biggest Pasar Malam, we are going to grab a beer here at this fine establishment. It's called Restaurant Good Place. And it's a good place. It's a great place. It's a great place. Tell us, uh, tell us a little about what's going on over there. So, like, we, After you stop baby. <laughs> every Chinese New Year, we're going to get like, we'll all get like uh, different kinds of like uh, Chinese biscuits. Everyone has like an array of Chinese biscuits. What's going on here? The mini crabs here. Mini crabs. Colin knows where they get it from. I don't know. Violada. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'm trying not to get in tights right now. Look at this rice, rice cake. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Try the century egg. It's like a fermented egg. It's black. What else can ah! I say? It's very, very pungent. Usually you eat it with the ginger here. Yeah. I don't really like I'm it. I'm not either. doing the whole thing, bro. I'm gonna die. Oh my fucking god, dude. Okay, I'm gonna get the ginger. Take it off. Ginger's good. I try a bite. With the yolk, with the yolk, with the yolk. 
But yeah, the, that pungent sort of like biting flavor. What do you think? It's very gelatinous, right? It's not like a regular egg already. This I honestly expected way worse. This is not bad. Yeah, finish it. All right, Century Egg, give us a thumbs up. Ya esa escotilla parece un sumidero y es tu corazón. Son cera, cera, son, 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 cera, cera, son, 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 cera, te va a quedar, sortera, te va a quedar. So, Jimin, tell us a little bit about durian, because there's a lot of variants here. They're a hell of breed. We yeah. are breeding people once by, like, the freaking, I want to say every freaking year there's a new one coming out. But the one every year they got a new durian drop here in Malaysia. Literally. As you can see, the durian lore is incredibly deep here in Malaysia. Oh. Oh, dude, dude, dude. I like I go there and they tell me the new ones and I'm just like Okay <laughs> bring, just, just bring just bring just bring just bring Whoa. But it tastes like any other Yeah what do you think of it? How's it done? Like oh really? Yeah just crispy crispy oh. and salty Alright Oh we got the vape store up here We just crushed quite a few calories I'm sweaty I'm wet <laughs> I smell like smoke I'm full, I'm fed, and I'm happy. I think the smoke is a good part. No, the smoke, I think the smoke is a good part. That's Malaysian cologne, oh, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's yes, sir. go. Ooh. Oh my yes, god. Sir. That's gonna be wraps on the world's longest pasar malam. It was quite the eventful experience. And, we're probably uh, gonna go back in there and eat a bit more. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. probably gonna have to send it back, but that's it uh, for now. And we'll see you at the next spot tomorrow. Ciao. Yes, So we are continuing at our next stop on a lovely rainy day. I was hoping for a little yeah. bit of sun today so I could take some photos, <laughs> but Malaysia's gonna Malaysia. It's Malaysia, bro, yeah. You're getting yeah. a Malaysian experience we right are, now. We are definitely a pair of soggy boys right now, yeah, but yeah. that doesn't mean that we are going to fail to deliver another spectacular location yeah. from here in Kuala Lumpur, my Malaysia. My feet are swampy, but my heart isn't as swampy right now. Don't say that ever again, bro. I'm gonna <laughs> pretend that never happened. And where where are we? We are at Tian Ho Temple. Uh, this is by Lauren Bellamy on top of uh, Robson Heights. Very close to my workplace, actually, like five minutes, ten minutes away from my Convenient. workplace. Yeah, yeah. I rarely do come here. My family usually frequents Burmese temples, actually. So it's nice to always come here with you again. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've, I've definitely frequented this place a couple times. Uh, it's so ornate and nice, isn't it? So I was reading up on it a little bit as we came here. Um, this place was built uh, to honor a goddess called Ma Tzu, a deity. Obviously, the Buddhist elements to it, but it's more like a Chinese religion temple. It's hard to explain the Chinese religion. What do you think about the Chinese religion? Uh, well, I honestly feel as though there's a ton of different branches of it, so it's kind of hard to like, break it down into one monolithic religion. It's interesting because if you go to any country in Asia that has Chinese people, you're going to find a, a slightly different version yeah. of what one would consider a traditional Chinese temple or religion, yeah, yeah. where I think would it be correct to say that there's even slightly different holidays and methods of celebrating? You're asking me, bro? I'm not religious in the slightest. I mean, even if you think of something like Chinese New Year, right? Like, they don't do Yisang everywhere, do they? Yisang is a very, very Malaysian thing. Like many people would maybe think that in Chinese New Year, everyone does the same thing, but not necessarily. In yeah. Malaysia, they've got Yisang. is like a, well, it's like the tossing of the salad, Yeah, right? yeah, there's a, it's like, it's a huge salad with salmon on top or yeah. some sort of raw fish on top. It's and pretty delicious. And you go as high as possible. Yeah, the thing yeah. To, and the higher you go, the yeah. more prosperity yeah, you'll yeah, get yeah, for the yeah, family yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. And how old is this temple? Is what, like 40 years old? Uh, I, 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 from what I've read, it was completed in 1987 and opened in 89. Wow. So maybe 30 plus years old. So, I mean, Malaysia is a relatively new country. It's relatively Founded new. Founded what, 1956? Nine, or well, 65? No, no, 65 is scale. Six, 64 was Malaysia. Independence Day was 57. 57, uh, right. The, when Malaysia truly came to its own as it is right now, its stays was 65. Right. We didn't really want to talk too much inside there because people are doing their business. Yeah. There's also a lot of weddings going on here. Yeah. Uh, this is where they have the Office of Marriage Registration. So yeah. if, you're, if you're a follower of the religion, you'll yeah. come here, sign those documents when you find the wifey, and then boom, you get a certified here. Beautiful place and absolutely a place that you should definitely go if you have the time. Yeah. Perhaps don't come on a rainy day like today and get a little soggy like we did. I feel musty right now, <laughs> so I think we should uh, get out of the rain and head on to our next location. Yeah. Let's do it. How about it? Bang. <laughs> Thank you.
Here we are in your mother's restaurant. Very excited to be here. Thank you for hosting. Yay. And tell us a little bit about the place. My mother's been in like the restaurant industry for like 20 years serving this food. I think since 2000, so longer than that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically since I, basically since I was a child, I could remember working behind a cash register at some point, going to my mother's restaurant, uh, at times complaining and lying down on chairs because I want to fall asleep after school. Of course school. you're complaining. <laughs> no surprise. A bit about uh, the background of the culture. So my mother's from Penang and that's like on the northern side of uh, Malaysia. Yeah. And this is really an amalgamation between like three different cultures. Chinese immigrants came here from China and integrated themselves and assimilated with the Malay culture. Because we're so far north, we assimilated with some Thai people. There was intermarriage going on. Of course. From that came our own culture and a unique blend of ideas came about of clothing or food of a lifestyle almost like that. Right. Uh, people feel very strongly about being Nonya. It, it's different from different people, right? And in Malacca, it's a lot different because they assimilate only, they assimilated with Malays and their food's far more Malay influence. But we had that Thai influence. And over time, as we've gone along, for instance, my grandmother was like half Burmese, half Nonya, and then she married a Chinese guy. So we identify and we still love the colors and the food. We serve the food in Chinese New Year. The strong identification, in some ways yes, in some ways no, right? I yeah. Know, yeah. It seems like it just depends on the context in which you're born into yeah, your family. Yeah, exactly. And then, I guess geographically, that's definitely a big ask. Totally, well, totally, right? yeah, yeah. Because there's also like a Singaporean branch of Nyonya. Yes, indeed. Right? You may have seen the, t the TV show, uh, Little Nyonya and Amazon Prime. Yeah, that's based yeah, about yeah, Singaporean Nyonya. Yeah, 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 yeah. And have you seen it? No, actually, well, well I mean, I'm a, I'm a Vinagro, I don't go to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Singapore, man. What I feel strongly about is that we have our own brand of flavors here. Because we are very like Thai people, we are sweetish, we are more sourish. In Malacca, they're a little spicier. A bit more of the Malay influence in their, in their dishes. So I think that's one of the things what that I want to show people. That though I think this kind of food has lost its place in the modern zeitgeist, but to us, it's like day-to-day, -day, homemade, unique, because it's homemade kind of food that you couldn't find anywhere else other in my home. It's a super concentrated yeah. cuisine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even yeah. if you go, what, hour drive up to the Thai border, it just doesn't doesn't exist, right? No, 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 no not, not at all. So it's unique to just between Singapore and Malaysia and only in these little isolated pockets. Uh -huh, so there's uh -huh. three pockets between Malacca, Penang, and Singapore. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So it definitely is a rare cuisine. Uh, I don't things. even know how to explain this kind of food to... Yeah. Western people, it's come out and it's become wholly unique. If you ever are in Malaysia, this is one of those things that you really have to try, and it's one of those things that most people don't get to experience. Iconic within Malaysia. I heard about it a lot growing up, but never fully understood it. It's a, such a niche within a country that has a lot of niches. Yeah, itself, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Malaysia, Malaysia truly is like a, an incredibly diverse melting pot where you can obviously have the, the three primary cultures of yeah. Malay, Indian, and Chinese, yeah. but even within that, you know, you have these, these offshoots and, yeah. and that makes this country a very special place. Oh, so many, you yeah. don't even believe. I mean, all right, well, it looks like food's getting ready to go. So, uh, let's chow down. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jimmy. Yes, sir. Been a fantastic guide and uh, let's eat, baby. And just like that, our time here in Malaysia is over. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed this tour of this wonderful city, and I hope it has given you some ideas of some new things to do while you're here in KL. Thought I'd switch it up here. Definitely different from what I've been doing on this channel recently. So if you like this video, any support is deeply, deeply appreciated. Thanks again for relaxing, taking the time to uh, join me on this little adventure. And I can't wait to see you all very soon back in the studio in Vancouver. So lots of love. I got a flight to catch, so we gotta get out of here. Time to roll, baby. Woo!